In this video, I'm gonna show you the ultimate coding setup for blockchain developers. Because I get this question all the time, like, hey, what kind of computer should I get for blockchain development? You know, should I use a second monitor, keyboard, mouse, all that kind of stuff, okay? So I'm actually gonna take you behind the scenes and show you what I personally use as someone who is a blockchain freelancer that spends a lot of time at a computer every single day, okay? So I've, you know, tried out lots of stuff over the years. So you're gonna see, you know, what I currently use now and I'm constantly refining. So this is not a sponsored video or anything like that. I'm just gonna show you what is actually here at this desk where I'm shooting this video. So before we get into that, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, just smash the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step by step, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so here's a quick behind the scenes tour of everything. All right, we're going to start off with the computer because pretty much everything else uh, is just tied to that and everything else is really just an extension of that and really the computer is all that I need uh, and everything else are really just nice to have but as someone who works at a computer hours and hours and hours per day most days per week um, I'm really glad that I have all this other stuff so I'm going to talk to you uh, about that because I think they can really help speed up your workflow especially as a blockchain developer you're trying to get a lot done I'll show you how all this stuff works okay so I got the computer, you know, second monitor, the camera that I use for YouTube, uh, some wireless headphones, a uh, wireless keyboard and mouse, and then also this uh, automatic standing desk and the office chair that I'm sitting in right now, which I'll show you all that here in a second, okay? So uh, let's start with the computer. This is the newest 16-inch MacBook Pro, uh, and I'm really happy with it, okay? I've had it about six months and, uh, you know, it's been enough time for me to really use it in a lot of professional settings. And overall, I'm just really satisfied because it just works. So here's all the specs on this particular computer. It's got the 2.4 gigahertz uh, core i9 processor as eight core. It's got 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, it's got a two terabyte solid state drive and an eight gigabyte standalone graphics card. OK, so this isn't exactly the top of the line MacBook Pro, but it's very powerful. And yes, this was expensive, but I was glad to pay the price for this computer because I'm going to keep it a long time. And there's lots of other reasons, which I'll talk about here in a minute. And so let's say, you know, you're looking for a computer to do blockchain development where everything just works. Well, this is the exact MacBook Pro that I use, and you could just spec this out for yourself. And so if you don't want to get that exact computer, what are your options? Because, I mean, I get this question all the time, like, you know, what computer should I get for blockchain development? Well, my really quick and fast answer is pretty much any computer manufactured in the last five years that runs either Mac uh, Linux or Windows, all right? And actually in that order, that's my preference, Mac, Linux, then Windows. So why is that? Well, basically blockchain development works best on the Mac right now, all right, with the current state of things. So I'll back that up. Basically, you know, I've used it extensively on my tutorials and on this channel, but it's not just my experience, all right? I've helped thousands of other people, you know, become blockchain developers with this YouTube channel, with my blockchain developer bootcamp, in person, et cetera, et cetera, all right? So I've actually watched a lot of different people try to do blockchain development on Mac, Linux, and Windows, and people have usually have the easiest time on a Mac. Things just kind of work out of the box. The libraries, the system dependencies install pretty easily on a Mac. It does well on Linux as well, all right, pretty close to the Mac, but then it drops down significantly for Windows. And so I see a lot of people really struggle with Windows, especially for blockchain development. And one of two things usually ends up happening. One, they either struggle through and eventually get it, and once they have it set up, they don't touch it, all right, which makes it hard to upgrade, or they go and just jump ship entirely, and they either get a Linux laptop, they or they dual boot their system, or try to implement something like Windows subsystem for Linux, okay? So some of these workarounds generally aren't as good either, because people who fail to really get their Windows environment set up have a hard time implementing one of these alternative solutions as well, so that's kind of what I would say about that. So if you have a if you have a Windows computer now, you know, you're not like doomed to failure or anything like that, but you are going to have some hard time getting that set up, okay? So or, or if you don't have a computer yet and you're thinking about buying, then definitely consider this. And this is a really kind of unique problem to blockchain development. I mean, it happens definitely in other areas too, but I've seen this happen particularly with blockchain because I've taught so many people who have tried to do it on Windows, all right? So backing up a step, uh, you know, if you want to get a Linux laptop, uh, Linux is a great platform for developing blockchain-based applications. The libraries run really well on Linux because, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a, a lot of developers use Linux, basically. And it's a Unix-based system, just like the Mac is. 
So uh, Linux is a great option as well. But what I use and what I prefer is a Mac because you get all that and a whole lot more. So yeah, with the Mac, things just kind of tend to work out of the box. And that's one of my favorite things about it, right? You, you set the computer up and it's ready to go. So, you know, it's really easy to install developer-based tools on the Mac. Um, and then there's so many benefits beyond that. So my last Apple laptop that I had, I think I had it for about four years, maybe four or five years. And of course, it was starting to show its age by the time that I got rid of it. But, uh, you know, it held up really strong for a long time. And I plan to do the exact same thing with this computer. So the Macs are expensive and I buy the Apple Care, but that's because, um, you know, I just want it to work. And if anything breaks, like it, the Apple Care, yeah, is also expensive, but it's cheap in time because I can just drop it off at the Apple store. They'll fix it and I'll have the computer for a really long time. And also with the Mac, you know, there's so much more that I get on top of a good developer experience. Like pretty much any consumer-based application is going to be developed for the Mac as well. You know, aside from video games, of course, I'm not really much of a gamer myself. So that's one big reason why I use it. But that won't necessarily be the case for Linux, all right? That's one big reason that I prefer Mac over Linux is because you can do so many other things on the computer itself besides just development. And so there's a lot of stuff about this latest version of the MacBook Pro that I like a lot. It's got the Touch ID. So I use this for almost all my passwords. It makes logging in really easy. It's one of the reasons I keep the computer out and open. I use this, you know, keyboard down here. Sorry, the Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. I'll show you that more here in a minute. But, you know, uh, I often reach up for this to log in for anything because I have all my passwords configured to just recognize my fingerprint. So let's keep going from here. Um, you know, I go out of the Mac uh, on the 16-inch MacBook Pro with this single USB cable, which is the power and also all of the data that goes out of the computer. And that's one thing I liked a lot, especially because I wanted to mount this thing. I didn't want to have a bunch of cables just like flying out of the computer. Um, so I just have one cable. It provides the power and also all the data, which powers everything else that you see here. You know, the, the second monitor, um, the blue, you know, the, the, all the cables that go to like my audio equipment and also the external hard drive and things like that. And so all that goes out into this CalDigit dock. I think that's how you pronounce that at least. And this thing is really great. I think I bought it at the Apple store. Um, you know, it's got all the data that goes out to this external hard drive. This is a Lassie, like I think eight terabyte RAID system uh, where I keep a lot of external data. Um, you know, it's got, I can do an SD card. Anytime I do videos on here, it's got, uh, you know, headphone jacks and a lot of great, uh, you know, different ports that I can plug things into. And this is sort of the one-stop shop. So, you know, the computer just plugs into here. And then this is sort of the brain that controls everything else. And, you know, it's, it's actually recording the microphone that you're listening to right now through my audio interface and everything. Um, uh, so yeah, that's really nice. All right, so next let's talk about this second monitor. And this is a really big deal. So this is uh, the Dell, I think it's called the Ultra Sharp. I'm not exactly sure. I think it's like a 20... 20- three inch monitor or something like that. Um, you know, the a specific monitor is not quite as important. It's just the fact that I use two monitors. And this is something that I went back and forth on for years, literally as a developer. I went through a time where I only wanted to use a laptop. And then I went through a time where I wanted to have, you know, two, three, a bunch of extra screens. And then I went through a time where I only wanted to have a computer screen and keep my laptop closed. Now, here's why I have, you know, completely landed on this particular setup. Uh, as a developer, I basically like having uh, my primary workstation with my code all on one side. So I'll pull that up right here and show what that looks like. Basically having the code and everything on one screen and then have the preview of what I'm working on on a smaller screen that's less important. And this can even be far away outside my focus, okay? So like if I have a user interface, I'll put it up on this screen and then I'll have my primary workstation where I have my terminal, my code and everything all on this because this will be like right in my face, you know, totally focused up in front of me. And then I'll have the preview of everything over here. And so sometimes people ask me about that, you know, and I, this is what I recommend for other developers too, because it actually is more efficient in my opinion. So you're not always switching back in between different things. I mean, it's, it's task switching. It's an inefficiency that's involved. And I mean, I don't have a super nice monitor. This is probably a few hundred dollars. Um, I didn't go for like the Apple ultra fine display that's sold in the Apple store. That's like a, you know, a thousand, 2000, something like that. It's, it's a lot more than I would be willing to pay just to have a second screen. This is plenty sharp. It works pretty well. It just has a HDMI port that, uh, you know, HDMI cable that plugs into this brain back here. And it's plenty uh, for what I need. If I was a graphic designer or a photographer, maybe I'd, you know, say, you say something different. But for developers, this monitor is just fine. And I know some people like, you know, the ultra wide monitors and stuff like that. That's totally cool too. This is just what I chose. 
And so next, you know, this desk, I've got these, you know, all the monitors mounted on these stands so I can position them exactly where I want them, which is honestly really important because, um, you know, if I'm focusing for a long time, I like to be able to put this at an ergonomic uh, eye height so that my head isn't like, you know, constantly going up and down while I'm trying to look at code or I'm not constantly pointed down or constantly pointed up. I can get it really at the right height so that I like it. And then I can also, you know, sort of move this in uh, for the same type of, you know, situation. So another big reason is for when I record videos, you know, I use this camera back here. This is a Nikon D600. Um, and I'll put the, you know, the computer to one side of it. And so that's not really as important for people who just want to do software development. Um, uh, it's a big bonus for me. Even if I didn't record videos, I would still use these on monitor arms, um, which is a bonus that I opted for when I bought this desk. And so, yeah, I can make the monitors touch one another so that, you know, my eyes can move seamlessly between one display to another. And it's at a really good ergonomic height where I can access everything. And this is pretty much how I work most of the time. All right. So next, let's talk about the desk, right? This is a pretty big desk. I mean, it's it's pretty deep. It's pretty wide. I don't actually know the dimensions off the top of my head, but this is the Uplift Company, right? This is the standing desk that they make. I looked at several different uh, standing desk manufacturers, and this is the one that I went with, mostly because the online reviews are pretty good. And I actually knew somebody who had an Uplift desk. And so I was able to just kind of look at the quality before I purchased. So I haven't tried all the standing desks out there, but you know, I went with this one. Uh, I really liked it. Again, it's not a sponsored video or anything like that. This is just what I use. Okay. So I like the Uplift desk because, you know, you can get the right height. So even if you decide not to like stand all day, or anything like that, or let's say you don't stand at all, you can still get your desk to the perfect height with your office chair, all right? So I try to alternate between sitting and standing a lot, multiple times per day. So I basically don't try to stand for too long at one time, and I don't try to sit for too long at any one point in time. I try to alternate quite a bit, okay? And the thing that's really nice about this is I can save presets, so I can press two, and it'll go to standing height, right? And I'll, I'll stop it because I don't really want it to do that all the way. But uh, it'll go to the perfect height that I've customized for standing. And then I can press one and it'll go back to the perfect height that I have customized for sitting as well. Okay, and you can see all my accessories on top of my desk uh, don't move or they, sorry, they move with the standing desk and they're unaffected by any of their settings or anything like that. So I'm a big fan of standing desks for overall health. You know, like I said, I spend hours and hours and hours at a, a computer every single day. Um, and I don't think it's a good idea for me to sit that entire time. And like, I know a lot of people who say it's not good to stand that entire time either. So that's why I uh, alternate quite a bit. Okay. So let's move on. Uh, next are the Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. So this is the Apple... Um, Bluetooth keyboard. I'm not actually sure what it's called. You can just look it up on the Apple store. This is their standard one. I wanted to get one that matched, you know, the computer monitor and everything. So I didn't have like a silver keyboard. Everything kind of looks similar. Um, I got the one with the keypad. I really like this a lot. I like the action on this. Part of this is just what I'm used to. Okay. I've used an Apple laptop for a really long time, even before I had this one. And I got so used to how the keyboard feels that, you know, I wanted to have a monitor, a second, um, you know, keyboard down here that felt very similar. All right. And I also really want a number pad, which I didn't have on the laptop itself. Okay. So that's a big reason why I stuck with this keyboard. And also I like having a separate keyboard away from the computer because I can have two monitors at the perfect height and then have the keys at the perfect height. Cause like I say, you know, I will adjust my desk even when I'm sitting to the perfect height with those fine adjustments over there and then get this right where I want it. Okay. So I've done it in the past where I keep my computer on the table and and then keep my monitor up. But then like I'm adjusting my eye height to like look at this monitor if this is down next to my hands. And I don't like that. I want to have both monitors perfectly at eye level and then have a keyboard separate. I think that's a big part of, you know, having a healthy setup. So I'm no expert in that area for sure, but this is just what my experience has been over the years uh, working a lot at a computer. So next is the uh, Apple trackpad. All right. This has like the force touch and everything on it. Again, I really want something that feels about as similar to the laptop as possible, mostly because that's what I'm used to. I mean, I've used a trackball. I've used some really weird mice. Uh, you know, I've also used like ergonomic keyboards, mechanical keyboards, all that stuff. This is just what I prefer because I'm just so used to working on a laptop and I want the interface to feel relatively the same, um, you know, working on the laptop by itself or at my workstation. And the trackpad helps me do that, all right? So I know some people complain about the ergonomics of them, saying it gives them hand pain, wrist pain, whatever, whatever. I don't personally find that, and I don't know. I haven't had any long-term health issues using this setup at all. 
All right, so next let's talk about headphones because this is really critical, all right? This is a major part of productivity. I use these Sony um, Bluetooth headphones. They're noise canceling. I'm trying to see if I can actually find the model number. Uh, they don't actually say on the headphones themselves. But, um, you know, I'll put a link to these down in the description below. These are a game changer for me. So I'm a little bit of a headphone connoisseur. Um, I've had, you know, dozens of pairs of headphones in my entire life. I've had multiple Bluetooth headphones, multiple noise canceling headphones, and these are the best over the ear, in my opinion, that I've used. I've compared them against the Bose. I like these better. Um, I bought these, had them for about seven months now, six, seven months, and I like them a lot. So you don't have to get those headphones. You can get the Bose if you want to or some other Bluetooth noise-canceling headphones. They don't even have to be Bluetooth. But noise-canceling is a big deal, okay? Or maybe you could even get acoustic noise-canceling if you want a cheaper option. So uh, it's a big deal for staying focused and getting work done because, you know, sometimes if you live in a anywhere where you can get distracted by noises or maybe you work in a coffee shop or an office, whatever it is, so you don't even have to listen to music, okay? You can just put them on and put on an ambient sound uh, track, like you know maybe some white noise, for example. I'll even do that because sometimes I get distracted, certainly when I'm doing you know intense work. And sometimes I'll listen to music when I work if it's pretty easy work. But if it's hard work, like coding that I really have to concentrate on, then I'll typically just put on some sort of ambient sound uh, to block out and mask other sounds. And that this basically you know really help with that. All right, so last but not least is the office chair. So this is the Herman Miller Aeron. Uh, again, this is a pretty expensive chair, but uh, you know I've sat in a lot of crappy office chairs over the years. And you know, maybe seven months ago, maybe a year ago, something like that, um, I got the air on, okay? And it's been a game changer. I was having some back pain with my other chair and this basically fixed it, combined with the standing desk moving up and down, okay? So, uh, you know, this is an ergonomic chair. It's really comfortable. Um, you know, I also have this additional back support here and then a little pillow, like a, a blow-up pillow that I bought off Amazon to get some additional lumbar support and, you know, Sitting in this and then also in the desk, you know, stint moving up and down a lot keeps my back a lot healthier than some of my previous setups. And also getting those monitors at the perfect height so that I'm not, you know, like have my neck bent in a weird angle. And then also, uh, you know, with this keyboard, having that at a good wrist height as well. All right, so that's an overview of everything that I use on a daily basis as a blockchain developer. You know, like I said, I've worked on this for years, literally just dialing everything in. I'm really happy with this setup and I'm you know, constantly making little tweaks here and there. And so if I do and there's big news and that changes, then you'll be the first to know. So be sure to subscribe to this channel and smash the like button down below so that you'll find out about that, all right? And also, you know, if you want to learn how to become a blockchain developer from, from scratch, how can you get started today? Well, there's a couple ways. You can go over to my YouTube homepage. You can find any of the free courses there. They're basically like Udemy courses, but they're free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step or, hey, maybe you want to take a massive shortcut entirely, I can show you how to master blockchain step by step from start to finish. Just head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started now. Like you don't have to know the programming languages. You don't even honestly have to know anything about blockchain. I can show you. All right. So that's all I got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.